Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 3 and Episode number 292 of Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah! Today, recording day, is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024, and it is hmm, a wet day. Here at the Beaver Lodge. Uh, yesterday we had some light snow to start off the day, which turned to rain, and uh, it's going to continue to be so uh, today. So um, basically, outside is a big old slushy. That's always fun to walk through. Well, I did. I did get a walk in the Winter Wonderland last night. Yes, I, I love walking in a snowstorm. Me too. It's 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 a lot of fun, you know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's lovely. Uh, but uh, yeah, after like somewhere in the mid-afternoon when we like left our curling match yesterday, it was literally just slush everywhere. Mm, yeah, it's never pleasant like, now, is it? Thick, thick slush like about like you needed boots that covered your ankles. Let's put it that way or else you were getting slush in your whatever you were wearing on your feet. So sneakers were <laughs> not a good choice then is what you're saying. Very bad choice. And you know, like nowadays, for some reason, especially if you're wearing like sports sneakers, there are usually some holes on the top to let air through yeah, or so they, they have breathe. like their leather or you have some like fabric on top. So you get wet right away. Mm. <laughs> That's why you need vessies yeah. apparently. They don't get wet. Ah, <laughs> okay. Yes, as, as Kit Ellen says, it's it's slurpy weather, slurpy weather. <laughs> or, or slush puppy weather. Apparently, the uh, the big uh, stadium in Kingston, which when I moved here was the K Rock Center, K Rock Center, and then was the Leon Center, is now going to be called the Slush Puppy Center. Well, the where the Gatineau Olympics play. You know, they, they're not at the Bob anymore, the Bob Gertheim Arena. Now they moved to yeah. they moved from Hall to Gatineau, like the section of Hall. Okay. And now the new rink uh, is called the Centre Slush Puppy. That too. So and it's just like for a skating rink? Yeah, that's soon. Like where there's <laughs> hockey, calling it Slush Puppy. I, I'm not sure there, there's, there's, I mean, it is ice. Yes. But... You don't want to be skating through slush. No. <laughs> you don't want to skate or ski through slush. It's just not pleasant. It's yucky. And of course, what'll happen is it'll get, so we're getting all the slush, we're getting freezing rain, and then what do we get? Flash freeze, which means freeze, ice yeah, so. everywhere. Yep. Yeah. It's winter yep. in yeah, Eastern Canada. Goes, Eastern Ontario. Hope we don't get a, yeah. Hope we don't get a hard freeze before I clear the yard. Yeah. yeah same yeah. here with our laneway. Especially since we have a long one. I think our laneway is big enough that I think three cars can park before oh, we yeah. get to the garage because it's, it's offset very all the way back. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of shoveling. It's a lot of shoveling. <laughs> so my buddy yesterday posted a video. He goes, everybody should get a Yarbo. And I'm like, what the hell is a Yarbo? The guy from Corner Gas, Hank Yarbo? So I looked it up, Yarbo, and it is basically a Roomba snowblower. Oh. It's a robotic snowblower. It does your driveway. You You set its parameters and it just snow plows your driveway and it does a really good job and i'm like oh cool let me look it up let me see how much 
oh, that's, that's, that's expensive. Mm. Mm-hmm. Take a wild mm-hmm. guess. So snowblowers on their own aren't, you know, they're not free, but you can get a decent one for a few bucks. You can get a used one for a few bucks. Take a crazy guess. I'm guessing guess. in the tens of thousands. 7,500 bucks. 7,500 bucks. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's about 20, 24 by 36 inches. So, you know, about a meter by just less than half a meter, roughly the size of it. So, hmm. yeah. I'm your host, the Daily Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey, and with me as always, as you can hear, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. We have a nibble for you today. Bit of a potpourri of news, mm-hmm. but uh, lots of interesting stuff for you. So we hope that you like what we have prepared. A big thank you goes to our founding sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Miss Fee Mysteries from Carbon Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly, how is your mental health today, sir? I am still doing great. And I'm still happy for you. I'm, I'm just going to roll with it. It's, I don't know what's, I'm not sleeping well, but I wake up feeling in a, I'm in a great mood. I got a spring in my step. It feels like springtime in my head, which, you know how when spring rolls around, you get that first, oh, oh, it's here, right? Yeah. Your spirits, that's how I'm feeling. I don't know why, because it's gray and overcast and snowy and slushy and freezing rain. And, you know, we're, we're approaching mid-January. But here I am. So I'm just going to continue to roll with it for as long as I can. Springtime for beaver at Grizzly. <laughs> I, have a, I have a very quick um, a very quick thing for you. It's just a, it's a real quick thing. I, right. I think you'll like this. So it's this is from uh, Canadians Against Convoys. It's at CDNS, A-G-N-S-T, Convoy on the Twitter. And... Let me just scroll down a little bit first. I'll show you the the tweet that he was replying to. So here's the tweet he was replying to. This is from at PPC Mm -hmm. for Liberty. Drove out of my way Mm -hmm. to support a local coffee shop. Saw this, turned around and left. And what he saw is a pride flag basically with... Black Lives Matter. Power. Yeah, Black Lives Matter fist. Yeah. So this is business owners. Are you tired of right-wing nut jobs? This wonderful sign will keep those right-wing nut jobs away. Hey, 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 it's, it's reform p- repellent is what it is. Uh, yeah. It's reform repellent. Duly noted. <laughs> so feel free to share we it like it amongst yourselves. We like it. Uh, good morning to you, Kit Mohan and family. Good morning, Kit Ellen, Kit Elaine, Kit Tavi G, Kit Linda M, Kit Hugh, Kit the Daily Beaver, now AKA Sean. Lovely to see it. Kit Cassie, minus 24 Celsius in Manitoba. Yeah, Andrew Pierce. Right. Yee. Kit J. Crick. Who else do we have with us this morning? I believe, oh, Miss Deka, of course. Lovely to see you, dear. Kit Saucy, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, and if there's anybody else, I got the hellos in early, so... It's not that we don't know you're there. Well, we don't know you're there yet. Ah, there we go. <laughs> but it's not like we're not saying hello to you. Oh, say. There we go. All right. Um, there are some interesting things. Ah, Kit, <laughs> Sean goes Neanderthal kryptonite. <laughs> but um, all right. Uh, lots going on. Lots going on. Um, I'm going to try and do this whatever order it appears. My thing. Um. There's stuff going around because um, there was an incident with, well, somebody who calls himself a journalist. Yes. We know that they're not journalists. They've admitted um, that they're not a news organization. Yes. And uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, I sent you a link if you would like mm-hmm. to put it up. Uh, basically, uh, Skippy Air Quotes reporter David Menzies from Rebel News uh, according to Rebel News, was brutally arrested by police after he tried to ask Christopher Freeland questions. You know, he was as brutally arrested as Cryberry BKU was pushed into traffic, as he claims, um, when he tried to do something similar to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and he was just basically, like, you know, pulled to the side. And uh, he's recirculating that video. It happened to me, too, mm. because, well, you know, a self-aggrandizing drama queen won't of take course. any opportunity to, but what about me? Mm. Let's be, Let's be realistic here. Let's be realistic here. 
Should he have been arrested? I, I, I question that. He wasn't even arrested. He was detained. He was detained, yeah. I, I, think the, I think the RCMP officer was a little overzealous, to be honest with you. But, but he was hassling. Uh, he was hassling the DPN. There was, it was no. not a press conference. Whoops. What happened to my camera? Hang on. <laughs> Somewhere weird there. <laughs> There's a story of a man named Grizzly. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. We sort of went a little Brady Bunch here. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> there we go. Strange. I don't know what happened there. Um, so my, my, my take on it was uh, Menzies was being an asshole and he wanted to get arrested in air quotes so he can fundraise they have they already have a web page set up for it yes this is a playbook this is a playbook now that being said um i think i think the uh, verbiage of the rcmp officer was a little uh, heavy-handed i i get it he's frustrated with this guy because this guy's played this before he's been arrested twice once he's a recidivist yes one, Let's call it what it is. Lanceman uh, rally and once at a Andrew Shear rally. Damn. Crickets. Crickets when the CPC has the guy arrested. But the minute, you know, the, the Liberal Party has him arrested, which they didn't do anything of the sort. The security detail did it. Mm-hmm. They detained him. Mm-hmm. So let's, you know, let's, let's get the facts straight about this. Well, let's, you want me to show the video, sir? Yes, absolutely, please. Yeah, here we go. It it's, might be a little loud. I might have to turn it down a bit. Here we go. Ms. Freeland, how come the IRDC is not a terrorist group? Why is your government supporting Islamo nationalism? What? You been What are you doing? Now let's let's back that up a bit and watch what he does. Okay. So if you see uh, the woman walking in front of the DPM goes around the post. As mm-hmm. Minister Freeland starts to go to the other side of the post, watch, take a, take a look, see if I can slow it down yep. a bit here. I don't think I have the ability to slow the video down, but you'll watch. He sees the RCMP officer and bumps into him intentionally. I'm on that. See, watch, he lifts his arm and hits the guy. Yep. yep. He lifts his arm. What are you doing? Okay. Yep. That's the first thing. The lifting, of, the lifting of the arm is, mm-mm, and blocking her access. Yes. So it was done intentionally. Yep. Period. Let's watch the rest of the video and then listen to what <sighs> David Menzies has to say. You're under arrest for assault. Why are you pushing me? You're under arrest for assault. You're under arrest for assault. Police. Police, you're under arrest for assault. How am I under arrest? You bumped into me. You pushed into me. You bumped. I was just scrubbing with you. I got my credentials here and you just bumped into me. So excuse Police, me. you're under arrest. What is your for name in your badge? I'm over what here is your name second. in your badge? You've been told you're under arrest. Why am I under arrest? I'm over here. He, 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 he blocked my way. What have I done? What have I done? What? Sir, I was just scrumming uh, Christian Freeland. I'm a, I'm a police officer. You're under arrest. What is your name and your badge I'm number? Assaulting a police officer. How is that possible? Okay. Because you assaulted me three years ago. When you mean I was asking questions aggressively? No, no, your actions were. You were almost pushing everybody over. Lincoln, you got this on video, right? He's saying I'm pushing people over. That, that, that's an absolute falsehood. There were, there were feet were shuffling. So now it appeared that way. That's what you're saying, officer. It appeared I was pushing people. I wasn't. I didn't touch a single person. That was a little bit aggressive for what was happening. Get that. You got it. Got. You're under arrest. Please okay. take the microphone out of my face. Well, I, I'd like a. Okay. I'd like so an ongoing going record of this. Can I have the microphone? Can I have the microphone? Can I have the microphone? No, 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 Can you give? No, 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 I'm not. Take your hand out. Why am I under arrest? I'm just doing my job. Stop resisting. You don't need to resist. I don't have to. You don't have to say anything. You know the You know the drill. I have nothing to hide, sir. Welcome to Black Faces Canada. This is what they do to journalists. I was merely scrumming Minister Freeland. Oh, you didn't know he did that, did you? No, I after a while, I just, I didn't watch it all the way through. After a while, I didn't say no. Yeah. And a RCMP officer blocked me, and evidently this is now a trumped-up charge of assault, folks. I didn't come here to cause any trouble. I came here Bullshit. Bullshit. to do my job, and now I'm handcuffed. 
This, this is your Canada now, folks. You know, this is the Gestapo taking blackface's orders. Outrageous. And meanwhile, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is not a terrorist organization. Then why didn't the conservatives make them a terrorist organization when they were in power? Oh, right. We'll get to You're that. You're scooping my whole show, Mr. Grizzly. We'll get to that. It's not a terrorist organization. <laughs> and these liberals have the audacity to show up at a vigil for, uh, for a plane in which almost 200 people were killed. 57 Canadians, one unborn child, by the way. And look at this. They don't want, it is against the law in Blackface's Canada to ask insensitive questions. Imp Again, with that comment. Polite questions. So, a, gov a Canadian government that props up an Islamo-fascist regime, that's okay. But if you ask questions about that, uh, that's not okay. This is an absolute outrage. I didn't come here to cause trouble, folks. I just came here to ask Holy questions. Shit. Have to back what, up a little bit. Okay, they're conducting That's my cameraman, sir. He's not doing anything. Yeah. No, I just want to provide some space so that everybody's safe here, okay? All right. So we have a couple of things going on here, okay? Number one, the black police officer was informing him of his right to remain silent, which he should have taken advantage of because everything he has said after this disproves his point that he was doing nothing and was just there to ask questions and not cause trouble. Mm. Number two is I am going to respectfully disagree with you with the police officers being overzealous because we have a context now. Remember the video that set off our friend Mr. Kretzman where the restaurant in Vancouver at which the Prime Minister was dining was encircled. Remember the incident in Belleville. Mm -hmm. Remember the incident with Mr. Singh in Peterborough. Yes, this is a repeating These that. people are violent and aggressive. Mm -hmm. And because all of these things, if you treat this as happening in a vacuum, mm -hmm. that's one thing. If you consider everything that has happened before and all the escalations, the friendly sausage maker mm -hmm. bringing nooses, mm -hmm. Well, here's my take on why I thought they were a little aggressive, because it I'm, just helps them grift more money. Yes, that's I my, understand that's that. That's my take. And But that's the point that we made on the show yesterday. Mm -hmm. The goal is to get them to overreact. Yep. Now, the police officer, the Caucasian one, who looked at him with eyes wide open, said, Sir, mm -hmm. you are under arrest. <laughs> like, let, you have done this before. Mm -hmm. This is also... The situation why they're not over why i don't think they're overzealous, overzealous is because he has done this before he is known to have done this before agreed he is known to police i, I just think it's this it's, person it's playing into his game which helps as absolutely that's my take but you know. but that's why he did it the way he did that's why he did the shoulder mm -hmm. hockey shoulder just, check yeah. yes. also there are ways to scrum a politician running up to them aggressively and shoving a mic in their face. When you are walking to someone up to someone out of the blue, very fast and ambushing them, police have a couple of seconds to determine whether or not you're dangerous or not. They are always going to err on the side of you are dangerous. Period. Had he yeah. just been standing in place, waiting her for her to come, holding his mic saying, Madam Freeland, Madam Freeland, and then started walking beside her mm -hmm. that would have Different. been another thing yes. but he came right to her mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen in that case again particularly with this bunch who are provocateurs and they know Period. will take actions physical actions because he needed to be taken out absolutely needed to be taken out there are plenty of opportunities to scrum mm -hmm. oh yeah if you want to scrum oh this was all part of their playbook it's all of us. Yeah, this is part of the playbook. So, and it's the same thing that Crybaby Caillou does. Mm -hmm. When every time when he, he gets we, we escorted, have, he puts his hands behind his back, like behind he's been his arrested. back, <laughs> like this, or pretends he's been trapped into traffic. Now, if you're out there, uh, we got Kid James here. It's precisely that he is known for this. That the security guy was a little more willing to block his path. Menzies was looking for the contact, and security gave it to him. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, agreed. That's that's yeah. Like this, they stood in this way, this, and what are you going to do? 
he put his shoulder up and he continued walking anyway, mm -hmm. rather than stopping. When a security guard or a police officer stands in your way and blocks your access, if you choose to keep walking, that's on you. Yeah. Canadian press reporters are not being arrested. No, just Rebel News. Why? Not because, and again, wait, let, let's, let me back that statement up. Just Rebel fake news <laughs> because they're not a news organization. They said in court, they are not a news organization. They are not journalists. Mm -hmm. They testified in court. Mm -hmm. Now you have all of this going on. Right, you have all the usual suspects, the Cryberry BKUs, and whatnot, jumping in, saying that this is terrible. Now, here's the thing: you've got Pierre Poliev as well doing this. Again, we do not know where this man is yet, still. Mm -hmm. But from wherever he is, from the safety of wherever he is, his incognito area, he posts this. Mr. Grizzly, if you would. Just a second here. A journalist was arrested for questioning, questioning a liberal minister, and the parliamentary press gallery doesn't say a word. Trudeau has divided media into two groups, those he's bought off with bailouts and those he censors and has arrested. Sign here to support a free press. Okay. Holy shit. This is a fascist statement. Period. This Period. is an utterly pure, 100% fascist statement, kids. No two ways about very it. clear, okay? One, he was not a journalist. Two, for questioning a liberal minister. That is not the reason for which he was detained. He was not detained for asking questions. He was detained for his behavior. Correct. It ain't what he did. It was the way that he did it. And this is a typical conservative ploy. They complain and says, well, all we did is just this. No, that is not all you did, did, did was just that. Remember when we showed you that picture of uh, Joe, that protester, where she was getting arrested holding up a peace sign and says, I got arrested for, like, no, no. What did you do before that picture? You didn't get arrested for just being at a protest. Nobody gets arrested for just being at a protest. You did something. Okay? It is you, Mr. Polyev, who divides the media into two groups, those you meet with and those you don't. Precisely. And you do not support a free press. You do not have true press availabilities. Your last one was 48 days ago in that synagogue when you completely attacked Paula Lorigio mm -hmm. for simply asking. She simply asked a question. A she stood storm. where she was supposed to respectfully. She did not advance to you. She did not approach you. And all she asked you is if you could have used better judgment by not labeling something that wasn't labeling something as a terrorist event that no authority or no reputable media source citing an authority had stated was a terrorist event. And you went all MGTOW over her. And that was not your first incident because you did that aught Mr. David Urquhart mm -hmm. in the orchard. Mm -hmm. And you did that to Mr. David Aiken. Oh, yes. You, sir, do not support a free press. No. Not at all. That thing from his was two lines three, if you say sign here to support a free press, in fewer than 280 characters. There was that much fascism. Oh, yeah. And if you want to add to that, this David Menzies guy, Mr. Grizzly, the court thanks to uh, Luke Lebr sorry, thanks to Luke Lebrar. That was me. I clicked a wrong button there. Okay. Uh, of press progress. Mr. Menzies was also arrested at a conservative event in 2021. Melissa Lansmed said Menzies was 
homophobic towards her and said he made her, made her feel unsafe. Diapoliev did not tweet about the statement of freedom of the press or speak out to defend Menzies at that time. And then we have a statement from Melissa Lansman, if you want to put it up, Mr. Grizzly here, dated I July 25th, 20, oh, sorry. 21. Sorry, here we go. Yeah. Yes, here we go. For immediate release, Thornhill, Ontario. Today at Peter Kent's annual summer celebration, I answered various questions from a number of outlets, including from David Menzies. When Mr. Menzies' line of questioning became homophobic and related to my sexual orientation, I ended the interview. Afterward, I spoke to some constituents, but ultimately left the event because I felt unsafe. Thankfully, no one was hurt today. I am very confident that any investigation will demonstrate that I acted appropriately and with the utmost respect. I have not engaged with the authorities, nor did I call them. Melissa Lansman, conservative candidate for Thornhill. Now, the leader of the opposition is running to the defense of a man that his current deputy leader of party said made her feel unsafe after all the water carrying she has done for him, including appearing on CTV, question period, at the end of the year to do a year at interview in his stead and pushing the notion that an opposition party's role is to not propose anything to the Canadian public for 22 months until an election happens and stood by him at that synagogue event when he tore in to Paula Lariggio and posted those pictures during the convoy of empty shelves from London, UK. Mm -hmm. And then spelled shelves. And stood up in the House of Commons and took offense at the suggestion on behalf of the whole party. The leader of the opposition singled her out as the Jewish person to stand up and say, how dare you call us Nazis? I'm Jewish. But at that point, she did not also care about being lesbian. Mm -hmm. When David Benzies attacked her, though, she did. It would be, sure, very nice, given that Mr. Poliev is in hiding, if someone from the press asked Madame Lansman how she feels working for a man who's going to the barricades for a man that made her feel unsafe and attacked her for her own sexuality. Have you... Um... And will she stay in that job, or will she resign? Just like... Laurie Goldstein of the Sun decided to stay in his job after he learned that the paper for which he works actually is anti-Semitic, yes. as he is going around labeling anybody who disagrees with his positions as anti-Semites. They do not care about anti-Semitism. They do not care about homophobia. They do not care about violence against our elected representatives, because if they did, their positions would be consistent over time. And, the, and their sliding scale of morality mm -hmm. would not happen. It would not matter whether it happened to a liberal or a conservative or a new Democrat. Wrong is wrong is wrong, no matter to whom it happens, no matter the political beliefs of to whom it happens. This is a fascist party. When, when you have a former uh, member of parliament and former journalist, Peter Kent, tweet this. And when, when was this? I don't know. Have you seen this, sir? This is from July 26, 2021. This is the Melissa Lansman incident. Great to see Thornhillers at my annual summer celebration Sunday. Regret the pandemic precautions breached by rude, crude, bully, pseudo journo physically harassing CPC candidate Melissa Lansman with hateful questions like this. One question, one Ken. One question, one question. Does Melissa here based on merit or sexual after. orientation? After. 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 Is this, is this... Mm. Mm. 
There's more from Peter Kent too, by the way. Yeah, There's, Peter Kent used to be a journalist, but he's a conservative, and or I'm not sure if he still is, but wasn't. No, conservative he's, he's retired now. Yes, but here, here, look. This is, and he got into it with our favorite former journalist. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Do you want to read it, sir? Uh, Sue Ann Levy, the lady, and I use the term loosely, who attacked Mr. Grizzly for having punched Nazis, saying, you're violent, when she herself is Jewish. Yeah. She ran first to the defense of Nazis for the narrative. Oh, Peter, come on. Physically harassing? The video shows David being pushed around by the bully in the red shirt. While the question may have been rude, it was not homophobic, and you know it. I thought you were better than this. Peter, Peter Kent, Kent says, You've seen selective clips. He's a typical rebel news lout. Create an incident, bully, insult, defy security and police cautions, then find, fundraise as a bogus victim, in quotes. I'm disappointed in you, Sue Ann. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll blow then, that up a bit more. All right. It's hard to, then, oh, no, it won't, it won't let me do it. There you then go. Sue Ann continues. Oops, sorry. Try that again. There we go, sir. He has to crowdfund because he gets no government money. Oh, there's Come some on, irony Sue now, a couple of years later. You yeah, had no problem with being interviewed by Stephen LeDrew, who also made a state made a shameless pitch for money before you interview. As for sleazy, I would use that to describe the entire nomination campaign for your seat. Come on, Sue Ann. There's a difference between subscribing to fair comment blogs and pretending to be a free speech crusader while bullying and insulting with a hateful sexist agenda. Then asking for money when unacceptable behavior leads to handcuffs? Mm -hmm. Now, this is July 26, 2021. Mm -hmm. The play, Peter Kent. A conservative, I guess, was he MP at the time? 2021? I can't yes, remember. Yes, he was, I believe so. Was, yeah. The play. He called the play. The playbook. Mm -hmm. If you could put the tweet back up there, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah, just a second. Everything that, Mr., everything that Mr. Kent said in that tweet happened in that video. Mm -hmm. let's, let's see here. And... Boom. We'll just start at the beginning there. Yeah. The rebel news, lout, rebel news lout comes along, creates an incident, bullies, insults, defies security, police cautions. Then he fundraises as a bogus victim. It's a playbook. It's a playbook. Yeah. Period. Right. And if we also want to talk about how Pierre supports the free press, um, remember Stephen Mayer? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. published November 24th, 2023 from Stephen Mayer herself. I was surprised to see my name come up in Chad and Proudfoot's column last month about Pierre Polyev's apple chomping debate with an overmatched reporter. Polyev used me as a rhetorical device asking Proudfoot if I could be blamed for death threats he received a decade ago while I was covering his controversial changes to the Election Act back when he was Stephen Harper's Minister of Democratic Reform. There's a pattern. Mm -hmm. There's a history. Eyes wide open, kids. Because they expect you to look at each one of these incidents in isolation. Mm -hmm. And say, oh my God, isn't that terrible? Look at the body of work over time. These are manufactured scenarios. Again, to attempt to get people to overreact so that they can stand and look at a camera as they are being detained and saying, we live in a fascist tyrannical state. This is your Canada now. Please send money. Don't vote for the fascist. Well, the, this is not okay. The fundraising shtick, which... That's what this is. It's a grift. The website, I Stand With David Menzies, um, that's been around since 2021. They just bring it back up whenever they need it. This is all part of their grift. Yep. All part of the grift. Yep. It's just simple. According to Crybaby Caillou, it's 
Justin Trudeau's media protection squad. Pushed me into oncoming traffic in August. This is not an isolated event. It is widespread. Really? I'm happy to tech now. Hating me this week. <laughs> of course. Seriously. You would. Let, let's watch Mr. Crybaby Caillou allegedly being pushed into traffic. Oh, hang on just a second. I got to open it in a different browser because I'm blocked on this one. So I got to go in anonymously to open it. Okay. <laughs> just give me a sec. And while you have uh, this going on, all the minions are out there too. Because the main one these days being, um, well, you have Andrew Lawton. Police are there to uphold the law and public safety, not to prevent politicians from being asked questions by journalists who the government will not permit to ask questions in official settings. My statement on behalf of the Independent Press Gallery. I'm not going to read the statement. Hmm. I'm not going to write read the statement. All right. Because the Independent Press Gallery is another one of these sham organizations. Yes. Okay, I've got it now, here. Just give me a sec while I bring it up. You want the, I got, the, okay, so we'll go with yep. the, the tweet and then I'll show the video. And there's disregard what's at the bottom i had to log in anonymously because i'm blocked from seeing anything kian posts or, or nazi caillou i should say uh, uh, where did it go hang on hang on i had it here a second ago there it is okay so i, I shared the wrong i shared the wrong one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hang on i gotta start it over again oh stop installing ad blockers uh, da, da, da. where does it go where did it go Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, the Kit James here in the chat go. So why would the RCMP give them the win? Just let him go by shuffle and let Freeland disappear. Now Team Azure gets the money, and the rest of us shake our heads. Um, I'm not sure that that was going to be an option. So it says, it says the RCMP gifted Team Ezra by allowing the contact to happen intentionally. I don't think that was going to happen. I don't think that was going to happen. I guess they could have sort of created a wall. And let Freeland mm -hmm. go through a small to, to stop like this to yeah. three, four, and you know, try to force someone to go to the other side. But he was going to bump into them no matter what. He raised no his shoulder. What. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, he, he did the Gordy Howe greeting, elbows yeah. up. There was there was no scenario here in which this man was not going to make contact with the RCMP in any way, shape, or form. And that means that the only alternative was to let him get even closer. Uh, that can't be done. Look, mm -hmm. that's the thing with these people that you have to that we have to understand is they are going to do it anyway. So anybody who's progressive minded that says, "Oh well, you know, we can't do this because we're going to provoke them," they're going to do it anyway. They're going to claim you're a fascist or a tyrant anyway. No matter what, they're going to find a way to to to, um, to bring that so, down upon you. So head. slap the silver bracelets on them. Invoke the Start Emergencies months, Act months. when it's time. <laughs> Don't delay. They're going to call you. Like when we we talked about that, the invocation of the Emergencies Act was a kid glove. It was textbook standard mm -hmm. example to the entire world how you dismantled this type of thing. This is how you. And do they it. are yeah. still over a year later. But my frozen bank account were tyrants. They are going to say Years. it anyway so take the action don't pussyfoot don't hesitate just do it don't let the citizens of ottawa being taken hostage for about four weeks because you're afraid of what it might look like just put an end to this shit well you of course the thing was we had levels of government that were responsible oh, yeah. for doing and dealing with that and they didn't there was the city then yep. the province neither one of them did anything Finally, the government was like, well, federal government, my hands are tied. We have no other choice. We have to do this because nothing else is yep. being done. So, and th this, this is uh, from Tavi G, this comment um, makes one think that, you know, perhaps she has a more aggressive security detail because of what happened when she was in her home province of Alberta last year and that Neanderthal as well. in the white grease stained tank top charged her in a hotel lobby. So I'm sure her her uh, her her 
team, their security team, is a lot more aggressive and vigilant because of that incident. Because she was by herself, and that was a big dude. Yeah. I think, uh, well, we have Kit James in the chat here like this. I know it was a grift, but the grift worked because the officer made sure the bump happened. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm done. The grift worked because David Menzies was going to bump in no matter what. The officer got in his way. Menzies had the choice to go around the officer or to stop. Mm -hmm. There was two. There was another side to that sidewalk. He could have gone around the other mm -hmm. post. Like but the, the young, lady young lady did before. Did. It is not the police officer by doing his job of standing in the person's way that made sure the bump happened. It's the mm -hmm. person that kept the momentum going that made sure the bump happened. He was going to bump into somebody no matter what and get himself arrested. That, that was the entire plan. That was the plan. entire plan. Yes. There was no scenario was in which the grift was not going to happen. That's what he was there for. There's lots of things that police officers do wrong. This is not one of them. Oh, agreed. Agreed. I have the video queued up here, sir, that you sent me. Do you want me to uh, play? Uh, yeah. So this is... Uh, yeah. Justin, can you tell me why your Minister of Climate Change is serving on a communist council? Can you tell me about that, Justin? Well, why are you pushing me into traffic, bro? Hey, you stepped on my foot. Why is your climate minister serving on a communist council? Watch up. Yep. Justin. Don't touch me. Justin. Don't cross that line. Okay? That's enough. No, no, you stay right there. You I'm paying these guys. Go across. Go across here. That's the security vehicle. You're paying these guys to subvert democracy, to stop Justin Trudeau from answering really basic questions. Exact same playbook. Yeah. Exact same it's, it's playbook. It's part of their playbook. I guess. And then don't touch me. You are aggressively mm -hmm. approaching the leader of the nation who you know has a security detail. You know what will happen if you do this. And then you say, mm -hmm. don't touch me. And then you try to walk away. You don't get to do that and just walk away. Oh, well, it didn't work this time. I guess I'll try next time. Do -de -do -de -do. You don't get yeah. to walk away. You don't get to walk away. This is... And this kind of stuff is going to keep on happening. And one of these days, you're going to get one of those guys like Daisy, who we showed you the other day, was yelling. Mm -hmm. Who will be way more unhinged. And will have a knife or a weapon or something. One of these days, this is going to happen. The friendly sausage maker had an arsenal in his vehicle, yeah. but he just wanted to talk. You know, I don't normally go to talk to anybody I haven't met yet, especially, you know, the Prime Minister of Canada, with weapons. That's rather provocative, don't you think? Show up with a whole bunch of rifles and guns and knives. and I just want to have a conversation. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> I don't approach a conversation with weaponry. That's a surefire provocative move that will get you into trouble because you're looking for trouble. And despite what your words are, your actions betray your words. Yeah. And then we have um, Canadian Tax Federation guy, Spencer Fernando, <sighs> who is his Twitter feed, personal one, has become a whole, I don't even know what you call it, but a terrible anti-government propaganda channel. Yes. And we're moving a little bit away from 
the journalism here on this one. But, for example, in a dangerous world, pushing far-left propaganda on our military is a disastrous mistake that puts our nation at risk. He's got one tweet like that. He's got another one. Trudeau's refusal to list the IRGC as a terrorist organization looks more and more sinister with each passing day. Um, a broken nation. Journalists are arrested while the anti-Semitic mobs get coddled. That's the one he posted specifically with regard to uh, Mr. Menzies. Um, it's just a screed. It's a daily screed of these types of things where everybody is an anti-Semite. Uh, you even have Laureen Teske Harper. Police colleges should show this footage to trainees on what not to do, what an overreaction, and what no coffee provided. Yes. And the police officer, I'm looking at the video again, what he did is he stood by the post, making it harder for him to go inside to try to provoke him to go to the other side of the post. And Mr. Menzies made another choice. Mm hmm You got Alex Pearson. He did nothing wrong, stepped over no line, assaulted no one. Video is crystal clear. This is seriously screwed up. No. No, not seriously screwed up. Spencer Fernando. I believe the silent majority of Canadians stand with the Jewish community. The rabid anti-Semites are small in number, but are loud and aggressive, which makes them look more powerful than they are. It's time for real Canadians. Mm-mm. There's a red flag, real Canadians. To be louder and speak out in support yeah. of the Jewish, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's an anti-Semite. Everyone's a tyrant. Everyone's a pedo. Everyone's a groomer. One of the 14 points of fascism is pointing to oh, fellow yeah. citizens and telling them who to hate. It's one of the signs. This is a constant drumbeat. We had Tanner, that guy. I don't know if we should, we showed that or not. I can't remember, but there's a guy named Tanner um, in Alberta who is the key person and one of the key people in the, the Alberta Prosperity Project. Who's going to be mm. delivering a seminar? Oh yeah, that guy's office. He he's yeah. yeah I know who you mean. Yeah, he makes David Parker look yeah. like a moderate. He's going to be delivering a seminar. On January 20th at the Morningside Community Hall in Lacombe area in Alberta about Alberta taking over the pension plan. There's videos of him calling all of us evil. Mm -hmm. Just outright evil. What do you do with evil? If you're a good person and you're being told that other people are evil, what is the prescription for evil? And we have Kit James again, Elaine, saying, it isn't all or nothing. Bump or let him do anything. He should have placed a hand on his chest and waited for Freeland to be clear. How is putting a hand on his chest putting a hand on his chest is actually a more engaged action. He literally just placed his body in the path. If you actually take the action of putting the hand on the chest and saying, whoa, and allow Korean to clear, that allows Menzies to claim he was assaulted because the police officer did a physical action moving his body forward into Menzies' body. That would actually, contrary to what Kit James is trying to claim in the chat here, would actually make the grift more powerful. Mm. Because all he did was stand right beside the post and said, you have it basically telling him with his body, you have the choice to continue on the side of, Mr. of Minister Freeland or going around the post like the lady right before her just did. And Mr. Menzies chose to raise the shoulder and bump in to the police officer. He did not slow the speed of his walk at all. He just raised the shoulder and pumped into him. 
this. If the police officer had done this first, Mr. Menzies would have still walked into his hand. If the police officer had done this mm -hmm. as Mr. Menzies was approaching and made contact, he would have been the first to have made contact with Mr. Menzies and not the other way around. The person who makes contact with the other person's body first is the person who is in the wrong. That would not have worked. That would not have worked. That, that would not have prevented this scenario. There is a playbook. There is a drumbeat. Keep on saying. They are trying to portray this nation as inherently anti Semite, as inherently oh, yes. pro pedophiles, as inherently tyrannical and authoritarian. Canada is not this. It's all bad. No. Are there anti Semites in Canada? Yes. Oh, Are yeah. there people with fascistic oh, authoritarian yeah. tendencies in Canada? Yes. Are there actual pedophiles in Canada? Yes. But it is not the overwhelming majority of us. Two thirds of us vote for center to progressive leaning parties. We can't all be anti Semitic pedophiles who love authoritarianism. I'm sorry, we just couldn't function as a nation were that the case. This is a business model. And it is very, very, very profitable for those who are doing it. Oh, and yes. the only solution is to find a way to make this unprofitable, to make it painful for them to do this. That's why I keep on saying, I do not know why, but Every time they make a misstatement, they should be sued. Every single freaking time. Systematically. I, I the, I think, make it expensive. Tie them up in court all the time. I agree. Make it very unpleasant. It is the only way to make them go away. Screw up the business model. I agree with you. But, and, and here's the thing. Here's the other side of that coin. If you do that, they're then going to accuse you of tying up the courts with ridiculous lawsuits that are trivial and are, are taking away from actual lawsuits that will help. And as we, a, I mean, you cannot yes, win with these guys, right? Like they're going to say it anyway. So do it they're going to say anyway. It anyway. Yes. There's a pattern. Uh, no, that, just... When, no, they're going in to do it. interpersonal relationships, when people are behaving aggressively or psychologically abusively towards you, they are seeking to provoke a reaction. This, what you need to do is interrupt the pattern. It's give them a reaction that they don't think you are strong enough to do, that you don't think they have the courage to do, or that they don't think you have the will to maintain, to do every time. It's about interrupting patterns. Yes. When somebody's coming at you with some, somebody asks you for something, you say no, and then they try to make you feel guilty. The last thing they expect is like, you know, you're trying to make me feel guilty, and I'm not going to accept that. I know I'm not doing anything wrong, and you're not going to gaslight me into making me believe. Now you have two choices here, A or B. What's it going to be? That interrupts a pattern. We have to start interrupting the pattern. We know what the playbook is. We have to start giving them responses they are not expecting. Like actually charging them. And taking them to court. You know what? Maybe we'll lose. But all the time and the money that they spend in court is time that they're not on the street doing this. And maybe if systematically that happens, maybe it'll determine it's not worth their time. But we have to interrupt the pattern. There is no other solution. That doesn't mean doing anti-democratic or illegal things. It means they're using our system, exploiting the loopholes, 
the gray areas, looking to where the line is and going right up to it to push things as far as they can. We need to do the same thing. It is the only way. I I couldn't agree with you more. It is the only way. It's the only way. Make it unprofitable. You got to fight fire with fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, how much time do we have? A couple more minutes. Um, All right. I'm I'm just sorting through my timeline here to to try and find something. I did find something, but we'll save it for another day. I just sent you the link. In, in your, I DM'd you the link in Twitter. There was a, a tweet here, I thought, from our good friend, Mr. Otter, that I, I thought I would show you because it, this is what it is. Let me just put this on the screen here. Let me just make sure it's, it's blowing up nice and big so we can see it. Okay. Whoops. And there we go. This is the tweet from Mr. Otter. Rebel News on court records stated implicitly they are not a news media company. Headline fix. Weirdo with a goofy hat arrested while acting like a fool. Stop grifting, stop giving grifting podcasters mm-hmm. your money. And it's the same thing that happened in the United States with Fox News and Tucker Carlson. They are not they a news organization. They said we're not a news. They said, they said so. nobody in their right mind would actually believe he is serious. That's what they went to court with to defend themselves against a lawsuit. They know. Right. They it's know. Just, they, wow. will go, they will go to court and say, we're not news. This guy's going to bullshit. Every reasonable person should know this. Come on. Mm-hmm. They will actually say that about themselves when push comes to shove because they will literally say anything. And then the very next day, They'll go into another venue and say, look at this, they're blocking news. We're just trying to be reporters. Because if you're not a news organization and not a reporter, when you go to court and you're saying it under oath, you're not on the streets when you try to ambush a minister who's been the target of ambushes before. And you get stopped. Mm -hmm. And Kid James, I love you too. (laughs) <laughs> we like this we sometimes may have disagreements on the way things proceed but it's always love it's respectful oh, yes. disagreement because i know the man's heart at some point yeah. we got to start dealing with people like we know their hearts a prime minister who does that much work to try and reduce the level of poverty. A prime minister who takes big political hits to his political capital in order to fight climate change and at the same time give Albertans the pipeline to tide water they want. From both mm-hmm. sides. He is not a tyrant and is not an evil person. At some point, you have to know people's hearts. That's one of the best defenses against bullshit. When Mr. Grizzly goes aggro, which I do from time to time, if you can, if you isolate that one moment. And you take all those clips of him being aggro, mm-hmm. and you make a stream of it. You go, "This guy's out of his mind. He's unhinged like this." If you watch the whole show over an amount mm-hmm. of time, you know where that's coming from. You know mm-hmm. his heart. Well, and then I just point people to the direction of my ASMR channel and discover that, hey, look, I have nuance. But you may not agree with that approach. We've had letters from viewers saying, mm, wish you wouldn't swear so much. Mm-hmm. We've, and I'm, I'm actively trying to this, dial that you know, back. But... Hey, like swearing actually is, according to psychological signs, stu- studies, a sign that someone's actually quite well adjusted as opposed to, mm-hmm. and actually is intelligent and has something to say if they use it sparingly. Thanks. And we made that case mm-hmm. to that viewer. And I said, oh, you know what? I actually did not know that. 
in fairness, mm-hmm. because, and they still watch the show. We've had, I've received personal messages that uh, said, um, you might want to have a conversation with your co-host. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, like, I don't need to have that conversation with my co-host. Mm-hmm. I'm the yin to your yang. I know his heart. I am confident. Mm. Thank you. It's nice hey. to hear. Come on. You're going to make me tear up. We have to start... We have to start stopping. We have to stop. Is your sentence structure disassociating events from the people? Everybody is going to have a bad day and nobody is their worst moment. No. Exactly. Nobody is their worst moment and we all have bad moments. Mm Mm-hmm. And that reminds me of the old Marilyn Monroe. If you if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. I hate that statement because it's a selfish, self-centered statement. I hate it with a passion. Here's why. You do not deserve my worst. You should not have to handle me at my worst. But, and I'm always apologetic when I'm at my worst. You only deserve my best. But I'm here. if most of the time, the overwhelming majority of the time, I'm at my best or at least pretty good. And one day I happen mm-hmm. to be at my worst. You also don't drop me as a potato, okay. like a hot potato, because one day mm-hmm. I committed the cardinal sin of becoming human. It, it does not sum up the entirety of my 55 years on this planet. Mm-hmm. And, and PNC Bio, it's not kids' content and it's not excessive. It's just frustration boiling over. And that's what it is. We had that conversation with Creek Pete. We're just so tired of the lying liars getting away with their lies every damn day. And they're they're never held to task for it. I've got, I got to show you something quickly from Rachel Mm -hmm. Gilmore. Yes. Yes. Uh, Yes. You've seen this. I don't know if you've seen this one. This is, um, I think I might've even sent this to you anyway. I'll put this on the screen and this, this is really good. I, I I like Rachel's work and she lives in my neighborhood. Mm. We've never met. I like her too. Anyway. I keep on inviting her on the show, but she this, doesn't reply. <laughs> I know. This fundraising email is unhinged. Poly F supporters are being told, number one, the press is state-controlled media. What the F, verifiably false. Number two, Trudeau is censoring, in quotation marks, journalists he disagrees with while buying off others. This is disinformation. Poly F knows that. And here's Polyev's statement. After eight years of Trudeau, freedom of the press is being buried by the Trudeau government and state-controlled media. Trudeau has divided the media into two camps, those he's bought off with bailouts and those he has censored and arrested. This is a dangerous trend. That, my friends, is fucking fascism. From the loyal, huh? loyal? From the leader of the loyal opposition. That is a fascist statement he put out there for all the world to see. It's bullshit. It's lies. It's fascism. This is a dangerous individual. And people keep telling me I'm unhinged because I say he's dangerous. I say he's lost his mind. They're like, well, you you know, somebody who talks about mental health shouldn't say that. I'm not running to be, I'm, I'm not in a position of government or authority over anyone. I am not in a position of the leader of the opposition in Canada. I can make an outlandish statement and not bend the ear of half the nation. I, I do not make fascist statements, number one. And if I make an outlandish statement, it's like, I invented the question mark. <laughs> that would be an outlandish statement from me. I'm not one for hyperbole. That isn't hyperbolic. That is fascist. Mm. Pierre Polyev is a fascist. I'm saying it. You can write it down. You can record it. That is a fascist statement right yes. there. And what you have just said is not an attack. It's not a personal attack. It's an objective statement of fact. Hand all of that to any linguist, any historian, hand his body of work, and they will come to the same conclusion. Exactly. 
I, have I ever told you the story of I learned not how to engage in hyperbole, hyper, hyperbole or exaggeration? Mm, I don't believe you. Have. When I was a kid, I loved my mom's spaghetti so much mm. that I actually said, Mom, I love spaghetti so much I could have it every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a week. So my mom indulged me. Breakfast, and that I lasted about two and a half days. <laughs> and I begged for something else, and I learned not to exaggerate. So you can? Well, hey, let's try it. She called my bluff. I didn't know it was a bluff <laughs> back then, but that's how I learned. It's like, don't exaggerate, because somebody might take you up on it. Yeah. She was very smart, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? Uh, mm -hmm, Rick, is it comes. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you, even though uh, today it was a bit dark. Yeah. It happens. Yesterday was yeah. light and fun, it's but informative. informative. Monday was dark. Monday was yeah. heavy. Today. Yesterday yeah. was a little bit lighter. Today, today, was today dark, it's but like we're again, ringing the alarm. Yes, we are. That's why I keep saying we are, 2024 is the year of pushback. We are pushing back against this. And it's not just us. It's centrist and progressives across, across the country who have had it up to here. Yep. We've had it up to here. It's above our heads and we're like, nope, we're done with this. We're not accepting this as the norm anymore. And if, and if mainstream media won't push back, we will. So let's build this community. Let's inform every Canadian as to what is actually going on. And, and it's not just us, of course. It's Dean, it's Laura Babcock, it's Charles Adler, it's Creek Pete, it's Cranky Canuck. All part of the same mission. Inform Canadians, call out the lies, put an end to the garbage. Let's take the mm -hmm. trash out. And Kit James, you don't have to say sorry. For what? Love is never having to say your story. For sorry. what? Come on. <laughs> Please. Jeez. We know each other better than that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hope that you enjoyed listening to this because we do enjoy making this for you, even when we ring the alarm, even when we need to get a little aggro or serious. We always enjoy making this for you. If you would like to make sure you do not miss the miss no. If you'd like to make <laughs> my dentures fell out. If you'd like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, you don't have to. Because the Ray Girl is here. And she has graciously and generously supported our pod page. So if you scan that QR code that's right under my chin, that will take you to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, if you subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. And if you would like to support like that, you know what I'm doing that, you know, when people walk and they don't raise their feet off the ground enough and you hear the shuffle, 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 I'm doing that with mm -hmm. my mouth right now. <laughs> it's like, yeah, open sometimes. your mouth, Mr. Beaver. Um, if you would like that, do not go there. That was a completely innocent statement. <laughs> no, I didn't. You saw I didn't. You saw I was the not gears trying turning. to be cheeky there. <laughs> I know. You saw the gears turning, but I didn't do anything about it. It was like... <laughs> Let that one slide. <laughs> we'll let it slide. You know when I'm being cheeky, there's, it appears yeah, in my face. <laughs> Oh my God, I got the gills. Uh, if you would like to yes, you <laughs> help us in other ways, um, please go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page and uh, make like it Elaine and smash with our buttons. Loosen up our buttons, babe. Uh huh. We have like, share, and subscribe. And be like the over 570 others now. I mean, it's, it just keeps growing really quickly. This is going to be the quickest we've got 100. 
since we put uh, mm. the site up very, very easily, the quickest we've got from we've moved from. Well, I noticed that the camp at uh, the ad campaign to promote us ended, so I'm, I'm going to restart it. So, uh, yeah, we're up to five. It was an ad four. campaign, so I'll restart it. Uh, yeah, I, oh, well, yes, yes, yeah, the I stickers had, and all that done. kind of stuff. Yes, yes, that. no, 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 actual ad campaign on YouTube. I paid money to have oh. videos of ours advertised. I did on not YouTube. know that. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, that's how do you think my my uh, how do you think my ASMR channel okay, grew? So I did fast? not know that. My ASMR channel is now up to one thousand eight hundred and eighty. I've gained twelve hundred and twelve hundred new subscribers based on an ad uh, campaign. I, in, in I didn't know you did days. that. Oh, for uh, for our show yeah. too. Yeah, so I'm going to start it again. I'm going to put a little bit more money into it this time. I, I I wanted to test the waters to see how it would work, and it was working. So I restarted it. I just have to go in and augment it and say, okay. Run till this date, this much money. Wow. Well, th thank you. Thank you. Um, more kits uh, have joined us over the course of the show, too. And welcome to you all. And thank you for tuning in. Um, so, yes. And if you would like to support us in other ways, then you can find your way to the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund via that QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head. And that will bring you to our coffee page. And if you are listening, that is coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And you can help us, as did Kit Cassie yesterday. Thank you so much for your generous support and your continued and frequent generous support, Kit Cassie. Happy New Year and congratulations on all your hard work, for it seems more people are subscribing and hearing your valuable message. Be well, lads. Thank you Thank so you. much. We Thank really, you. really, really appreciate that very much. You are all so good to us. <laughs> Sir, because this is I'm January really after Christmas bills and everything. And mm -hmm. people are still coming up large for us. I'm like yeah. blown away by it. Oh, um, and, and what, what's happening this Saturday? It's so? not this Saturday. I thought no, it was it this Saturday. It can't be this Saturday. Oh, you rescheduled again? No, it, no, no, not rescheduled. <laughs> it, it just can't. I'm, I thought we had talked about it yesterday that it was going to. You I wanted, wanted it this weekend, this then weekend. You moved it to the following, yes, and we but moved because back. we had to move because we got a programming announcement because we had to move. Um, basically, what ha what has happened, kids, is that we have had the good fortune of scoring the largest, biggest get in terms of political interviews that we have had in the history of our show so far, and mm -hmm. because I wanted to do it from here to be sure that I had equipment that was not going to fail because it's a big day. Um, the, uh, our guest is not going to be coming on the 19th, but on the 12th instead. Okay. I yes. didn't know that. Yes. So that, yeah. yeah I didn't have a chance okay. to tell you that. Um, because on the 18th, yours truly is going to be in Montreal watching Madonna in concert, which means that on the 19th, I'm going to be in a hotel room in Montreal when I go back home. And I did not want to rely right. on tech. So uh, that means I will not be able to get to Ottawa for a podcast on the this coming weekend, but I will be able to get there on the weekend of the 20th and 21st. I haven't, we haven't been able to decide whether or not it will be Saturday or Sunday, but Pubcast. I'll have to reschedule yes, yeah. the book. Pubcast will be uh, Saturday or Sunday, the 20th or the 21st, uh, and not this weekend. But do tune in Friday because it's going to be big. Yeah, yeah, that's our biggest get when it comes to politics in this country. By this far. Is our biggest and get and we've far. had yeah. a provincial MPP and we've had a federal MP. Mm -hmm. This is bigger. Mm -hmm. just so you know <laughs> and that's this that's friday this morning, friday morning this and okay. we will have our guest for an ex extended period of time which as we keep on saying in politics in politics an elected representative's most important asset is their time and mm -hmm. we are going to get a lot of it excellent live well, not a pre-record live so tune in absolutely i am showing live. so much leg right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
democracy is something that you do. Write those letters. Go get your shots. Absolutely. Very, very, very important. And if you live in New Brunswick specifically, ask for a meeting. With Blaine Hicks. Yes. Or whoever your elected representative is in New Brunswick. And let mm -hmm. them know you are You're not going to stand at all for weaponizing health care for transgender youth. That Well, they start with youth and then move yeah. up to adults. It's and, right? and it's not, not only you're going to lose my vote, I am going to dedicate myself and rally my friends to make sure you lose your seat or do not win your seat. Make it very clear that this um, is a non-starter. To answer Cassie's question, no, not that big, but we're working on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you lad score a Justin Trudeau interview? Oh my, if we, actually, if we actually managed to get the Prime Minister of Canada regardless of stripe mm -hmm. i would not yeah, i would not be able to contain myself <laughs> yeah, he'd, he'd be all over it i'd be like i'd put a, i'd have to put it's him like, on lockdown <laughs> well actually no actually that Stop. one we probably would be promoting we'd, we'd have, have, have to promote, promote the hell out of that yeah, truth, truth, truth be told truthfully. but yeah i would be like but and, and 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 again, any prime minister, forget about the political stripe, forget it, whoever it would be. Yeah, would, getting the yeah. prime minister or the, getting the leader of your nation, especially on a podcast, mm -hmm. this like we're not we're not CBC, we're not CTV, we're not like this. He might be amenable to yeah. it though. We should we should but approach him. And if see, that were the know. case, if that were to happen, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. you would know. <laughs> well, and, and after Friday's interview, it's possible that we could, um, have a little bit we more, more credibility juice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is true. That is definitely true. We are growing. Um, yeah, it did. You don't, Rome was not, hey, we had a five year plan and we're still in season three and this is happening. Yeah. So we were hoping to be there where we are yeah. right now. We're hoping to be here by yeah. five. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, this is taking this is a long extra beer, but hey, that's good. Um, so I think we did all the stuff. So Mr. Grizzly, I think, believe it is time for your words of wisdom. So I was reading something earlier this morning around 5 a.m. about Wab Canoe and how the people of Manitoba are going... I think we did the right thing here. He's saying and doing the right things. Will he become jaded over time? Who knows? And of course, there's people who come into the commentary and are jaded, right? Wow, his past. Yeah, he's made, he's atoned for that. He's admitted what he did. He has apologized. He has done the work to better himself. Unlike Scott Moe, who tried to deny all the things yeah. he did. Yes, he, he publicly said, and he's I did done the work things. in public. I regret We've seen them. him do the work. Yes. This is the kind of politician we used to have across the country in yes. all parties. Regardless of political yes. stripe, this is the kind of politician we yes. used to have. And I've got something in the Easter egg to show you an Ooh, example of that. I am so very excited. All right. Those are your words of wisdom, those are your words of wisdom Mr. Grizzly? Yes. We need more politicians like Wap right. Canoe. And, and if you can, what it boils down to is get out and vote for good people who are going to do, do good things by your community and for mm -hmm. your community. All right, Mr. Grizzly, roll them credits, please. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind.
So allow me to share this one from Craig Baird, our friend Craig Baird. We've had him on the show from uh, his his uh, his uh, blog, Canadian History Aches. Well, let's go. Because it's that. A with an X on yes. the end of it. So Axe or Aches? I just say A anyway. <laughs> Canadian, Canadian History A. Check this little tweet out he put out this morning. Or was it this morning? It says, in 1965, former progressive conservative Prime Minister John Diefenbaker was vacationing in Barbados when he started to struggle in the water. The person who saved him and brought him to shore was a former competitive swimmer, mm -hmm. future Liberal Prime Minister John Turner. Mm -hmm. Two men who are politically diametrically opposed to one another set aside their differences completely. Well, what one man did anyway, it's, it, it, this is what politics and politicians used to be like in this country. They remembered the humanity first. Yeah. And that's been forgotten for some time now. And we need to bring that back. Wab Canoe is an example of that humanity. Yeah, indeed. We need more of it. We do need more of it. And uh, to give a little shout out to, to Craig there, he crossed 40,000 subscribers. So congratulations, nice. Canadians Love History. Go, and if you're on Twitter, he's currently running uh, what a contest for what is the greatest Canadian song. Mm, yes. And entries. So we vote every week and then there's a table. And so, you know, a, 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 what do they call that? A grid? Um, bracket. Brackets. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Bracket. bracket. Yeah. Yes. And some of the pairings are just cruel, but apparently it's a <laughs> random generator that puts them together. Um, yeah. But yeah. If you have an opportunity, great fun, great way to get uh, get uh, informed on uh, Canadian music history. All right. All right. Kiss the guts. I got a show about that, too. That's coming back very soon. Yes. Yay. All righty. I'll see you.